Michael Clority joins us from RBC Capital Mike Markets. Michael, good noon to you. Hi, how are you? How does the um, jobs report filter into this fear of inflation? Every report I saw said dampened inflation fears. Do you buy that? Well, again, I think that I think that the market reaction today was a, a little bit more oil than uh, the jobs report. I think uh, you know we had some strength in uh, in the payroll numbers, um, a surprising dip in on the unemployment rate. Now, some of that improvement in the unemployment rate, you had a uh, very large drop in teenage unemployment. Um, big moves in teenage unemployment are often reversed the next month, so you know you probably slightly exaggerated the strength in the uh, unemployment rate. Um, but you know we are seeing uh, an uptick in uh, job growth, positive uh, all around from this uh, this jobs report. Uh, I think though the the market reaction uh, it's been a little bit more fear that uh, higher oil prices will slow the economy in the future. <laughs> and, uh, well, Victor, come on Sorry. over here if you would, Victor. Let's look at this. This is oil, folks. Intraday, one, two, three, four days from Tuesday, and up, up we go. And there's the print right there at 104, and we've come back. Michael Clordy, let's do dreaded first chart and bring all this in. This idea, folks, of the linkage of economics into the bond market and, for that matter, into commodities. We showed this chart. I got a lot of mail on this, even on Facebook, a half century of yield. This is the H15 series, Michael Clority, the 10 year yield, and up we go to the Paul Volcker 1979 moment, and then we roll over. Michael Clority, is the great moderation still intact? Well, I, I mean, I do think that the, the long downward trend in inflation we've had since the 80s is, is clearly over. Uh, lately, we've seen some some comments from the Fed saying, you know, for a long time, they used to talk about a uh, inflation target of around one and a half, one and a half to two. Um, that's still the official line, but now you know you more often hear a little bit higher than that, you know, two to to a little bit over two. Because right. in the past decade, twice we've had problems with deflation concerns rather than inflation concerns. So, given that uh, that repeated deflationary worry little bit more bias towards uh, modestly higher inflation from the Fed. I think uh, that means, you know, the, the long secular right. trend lower. Well, Michael Clorty, hold on a minute here. Let's bring in Steve Whiting's folks from Citigroup. He took the surveillance helicopter up here uh, today from Citigroup headquarters. And uh, I guess there's a little trouble coming down on top of the building. Good to have Indeed. you here with Michael Clorty of RBC Capital uh, Markets. Bring up the chart here uh, that you just brought up, Rex. This, we got a whole bunch of job charts, folks. Some really interesting stuff. Just as a rule of thumb, we're in search of 8 million jobs. Here's non-farm payrolls. Over we go. Michael Clority talking about that, that, that dampness out there where you see it uh, in lower yields, lower wage gains. When are we going to make back those 8 million jobs? Um, several years and uh, maybe uh, a few more than what we call several. Uh, it's going to take some time, but I think what's most interesting about that chart is that real output in the United States is at the same level it was at the peak of 07, in fact exceeding it a little bit, with 7.5 million fewer people working. And uh, the total level of consumption expenditures in the United States, either real or nominal, uh, is also at an all-time high with that many fewer people working. As you incrementally, however slow it is, uh, get it's these people positive. back to work, you'll add even more to U.S. output and consumption. And Michael Clordy, does that fold into the optimism on U.S. full faith and credit paper? You know, the foreigners keep buying it because they see those efficiencies, those productivity gains that we have. Uh, you know, again, I, th I think the main reason people are buying it is that uh, the, the Treasury market is the only market liquid enough to handle some of the size that uh, some of these foreign, foreign central banks have to invest. Um, they did start to move uh, some of the reserves into Europe over the past decade as all European bond markets started trading as one. But now the European bond markets are much more fragmented. You can have, uh, you know, Germany doing one thing and Spain doing another. Uh, now for the liquidity, you're sort of forced back uh, into treasuries. So I think mm -hmm. that's the main reason. From a long-term trend, though, you know, the, 
The U.S. doesn't look as bad as, as some other places. Um, you know, our demographic issues are, are not good, but a lot of other places are worse. Yeah, I like that angle, Michael. Let's stay with that, folks. This is the fact of the week from the laureate Michael Spence. See his wonderful noted project syndicate. Michael Clority and Steve Whiting, the laureate Spence, 95 percent of non-tradable jobs over the past two decades have come uh, in uh, the, the, the service sector. Here is the yellow line. Line, folks, which is non-farm payroll growth of the service sector, and the white line is the collapse of the goods-producing mm -hmm. sector. Stephen Whiting, um, do we have any hope of getting those goods jobs back, or is Spence correct that it's a service sector U.S.? Well, you can get goods output up, but whether you need people to do that work is another right. story. In many cases, that automation has, in fact, uh, destroyed headcount in numerous, numerous industries. Um, we're doing a little bit better right has now. Has China destroyed headcount? Well, um, I think that they eventually will. I mean, you can't sort of hope that sort of farming, for example, will be labor-intensive everywhere, even in sort of mm -hmm. the most, the countries that have the most difficulty, uh, in fact, uh, in, in developing, that ultimately combines do the work. And that we find that hopefully when you get savings from doing that, you can add to consumption and income, right. and then you can spread it out, and well, then you have other jobs. Uh, Michael Clority, I learned that fixed income strategist is a non-tradable job, so your job's not going to be taken by somebody in China or in India, but, but seriously here, there's real competition. How does the bond market filter in the competitive positives you see about the United States that you just mentioned? Yeah, again, I, I think that uh, right now it's not too focused on that. The the, the turn in a lot of that is, is further out. I think the the closer, uh, the, the, the more relevant factor now is just the today's difference between emerging market growth and uh, developed country growth. Um, that has been the, the primary focus. And one of the issues is as some of these emerging markets try to avoid overheating, we've been seeing uh, tightening by a lot of central banks all over. Right. It's can they engineer a soft landing or is it a little bit bumpy? Your, uh, than they like, and then how much spillover do we get back to, to our we're, markets from that? Earlier this morning on Bloomberg Surveillance, I spoke with Jim Glassman of J.P. Morgan. I asked him the importance of jobless claims. When that's moving down into the 300,000 range, is telling you we're starting to see the beginning signs of the lights coming on. That trend in jobless claims is a very important signal to economists. Uh, to, to me, a huge deal, folks. Yesterday, Going back to July of 2008, we get back. Here's a chart we showed yesterday. Michael Clority, what a signal. The four-week moving average of jobless claims uh, breaching 400,000, a lower number, a better number. What does that signal to you, Michael? Uh, undoubtedly good. And, and I think that uh, you probably would have had even a more pronounced move through 400,000 if we didn't have all the storms. You had uh, some, some claims related to uh, all the snowstorms on the East Coast. Uh, uh, for the, you know, a month ago. Um, so I think uh, it's meaningful. There is definitely some improvement in the labor market. We do have a long way to go, as you pointed out before, a long way from that uh, December, 2000, uh, December 2007 peak in right. employment. What should savers do now, Michael Clority? What, 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 they're boxed in with low interest rates. They've got a government saving Wall Street. What do they do in their CDs, in their full faith and credit bonds? Do they buy munis? Are you all tax-free advantage bonds? No, I, I think that uh, munis actually is a, uh, a good place to go. There's there's some research needed behind it because, you know, some differences between uh, credit risks in different states. But I think as a general rule, some of the good have suffered with uh, some of the more questionable uh, in this sell-off here. Uh, Stephen Whiting, we showed... Um the jobless claims chart there and profits. I want to show a profits chart here in a bit, your area. But, you know, you look, Steve Whiting, there it is. Bring it up here right now. Forget about unit labor costs. How about unit corporate profits? Wow. Yes. Is it going to be another wow quarter? Um, Walmart, 21% dividend increase. Well, that's important in the sense that, you know, we've had, we're now getting more pass through with stimulus both to employment and there's room as well uh, to see share buybacks, M&A activity, dividend payments. So you think dividend payments will rise at a double digit rate, low double digit rate for the next two years. 
I have to catch up with this. Are stocks going to compete with bonds? I mean, Bill Gross says bonds are a little shaky here. Michael Clorty, I've never heard. M municipal Michael, M-U-N-I-C-P-A-L. I've never heard Michael Clorty mention municipal bonds in my life. Is, is the competition there where stocks win? Well, this is the time, and we don't think that the window lasts forever, but within the capital structure, where you've had so much improvement in credit already, uh, and you're getting shareholder-friendly activity right now, where uh, costs for firms in the debt market have, have fallen really dramatically, um, just continuing to be on this track on earnings, I think, suggests positives for equities in the current year. Bring up this profit chart again, Rex. Bring up chart six here. Come on, Rex. I know you got your head in the weekend already. Bring up chart six. Michael Clority, the profit chart we're looking here looks like we're back to Dow 14,000, not 12,113. Up, up we go. What are you observing in corporations? Are they taking out more debt? Are they extending maturities? What are corporations doing when they see these profits, when they look at bond markets? Um, I mean, I think we have seen a little bit of a, a weakening of the linkage between uh, corporate bond spreads and the equity market. Uh, through the whole crisis, those moved in lockstep, where uh, you know, you'd have equity trade down, corporate bond spread widen. Um, now I think a little bit of weakening, and it's exactly as Stephen was pointing out, that there's a little bit greater concern that uh, steps will be taken that are stockholder friendly and bondholder negative. Let's uh, a, limp, ramping up the some more leverage on the balance sheet. Great. Michael Clority, thanks so much. And Stephen Whiting of Citigroup. Clority with RBC Capital Markets and Whiting uh, with Citigroup.